We're going. We're going? We're going. Going, dude. Where are we, we going? To Gadsden. <laughs> oh, okay. Sweet. <laughs> Just to get some fucking sandwiches and shit. Someone wrote me and said, um, uh, you know, you guys, you know you're going to uh, the Big Chief on Valentine's weekend. Not Valentine's weekend. On Easter weekend. I'm like, who gives a shit? I don't fucking care. I know is that Easter? like a big deal over there or something. I don't know. I think is there going to be I don't like know a what bunch of Easter egg hunts going on? <laughs> I don't know day? what is. I mean, we're was. bringing the fucking crowd to Gatson, dude. So yeah. whatever. Yeah, we'll and uh, there will be a link down there if you want to RSVP to our Gadsden trip on 420. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. I guess we're no. here to talk about the recent massacre. Um, what we know about the New Zealand mosque massacre. Sounds like Salvador is trapped outside. We'll have to deal with that in a moment. At least 49 are dead and dozens are injured after a gunman opened fire on two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand on Friday morning. It appears to be a carefully planned racist attack. Police say they also found two explosive devices attached to a vehicle they stopped. An Australian suspect has been charged with murder. Uh, the latest are the, uh, you know, the explosions and the uh, arrests. Basically, which is very unusual in these cases to have someone actually get arrested for this stuff, because usually uh, the people who commit attacks like this do end up uh, either dead. Being, yeah, they're either killed by the police right. or they kill themselves. They yeah, either at the end of it they turn the gun on themselves or they're caught by the police or they're sh- I mean they he was caught by the police. I mean they were sh- they're usually shot by the police. Um, New Zealand may be uh, not quite as violent a country overall, so uh, this guy was actually able to be captured. I mean, let's be honest. I don't think anyone in New Zealand saw this coming. <coughs> I'm sure they had they had maybe discussed or planned for it, but I don't think anyone sees this coming in New Zealand. Right. It's like, what is this, America? <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> exactly. Is this America? Where, is this, where are we? Is this your Compton? What is this? <laughs> Uh, New Zealand police said 41 people were killed at Al Nur Mosque, which is in the center of the city, and seven more were fatally shot about three miles away at a uh, mosque in Linwood, a suburb about three miles away. Wonderful. Um, why did they say it was about three miles away twice there? <laughs> um, the attack at uh, on uh, Al Nur Mosque began at 1.45 p.m., where people were gathered for Friday prayers. A short time earlier, someone appearing to be the shooter. Po- he didn't appear to be the shooter. He was the yeah. fucking shooter. Didn't he yell, like, subscribe to uh, PewDiePie, and then <laughs> yeah. ran in and started so, shooting? Yeah, he was a uh, white supremacist. He put his white supremacist ethno state manifesto. He filmed himself... Uh, Shooting up the mosque. It did looked you, like a Call of Duty game. Did you see uh, people already trying to scapegoat uh, PewDiePie, too? And Well, I mean, like, what's, he was, what, he was, what else is fucking new? And he'd say he was somehow what culpable else is new? for some asshole walking into a place and killing a bunch of people. I mean, if that the, ever makes any sense. What else is new? From no, I, I agree with you. It's not it's not a hot take, but it's what that's just the fucking... It's I mean, every, the what, time, what time has there, this not happened, and then everyone argues about whose fault it really is well, I mean, this, this, at the end of the day? From what I could hear... From from this guy, this is just, he's a child of the internet. He's one of these these kids that we're now starting to see come of age that were literally raised by fortune. And, and he wrote right. like a long rambling manifesto. And, his, another, another and it's a meme. It's His manifesto is littered with memes. It is. Did you guys read the manifesto? I read some of it. Yes. I was, Did you guys I was like, watch the I video? A, I, I watched the, I, wa- I couldn't watch the actual shooting video because I just can't right. deal with stuff like that, but... I did read. I, I watched uh, portions of it. That yeah, were news I, I didn't watch the video. I mean, I've I, seen it. I, I, I wouldn't say I would, I, I would really I want to see the video. His manifesto. I, I, I already have an idea what the video is. Just wanton, fucking indiscriminate slaughter of people. So I mean, I don't really need to see it. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, I mean, I'll tell you. Uh, from what I saw, it looked like a fucking goddamn video game. It looked like a, a Call of Duty or something. Did he have so the what, camera so it, mounted it, on his? Yeah, gun? it was. It was mounted on his helmet. On his helmet. Okay, so he had like a, and then it was like showing him like. So I mean, it people. looked like. It First looked, Person yeah, yeah, it looked like an FPS, which was very disturbing because you know that this dude probably he did that on purpose. Grew up on these games and shit. Yeah. And I'm not saying the games caused the violence. I don't believe that for a second. But no. I think that it was a very intentional fucking choice on this dude's part 
to do that. I mean, so he did this with guns, all of, like one gun. How many guns? Uh, I just, I believe it was just one. I didn't see him change guns at any point. He changed clips, clips several times. So it's yeah. one kind of assault rifle style gun, or yeah, what? it looked like it was probably. I mean, I'm not a gun expert. I think it was an M16, but it could have been. I think something it was an AR15. That makes sense. I mean, I think uh, I'm most, no gun expert. So there is 30 round magazines. There is something to blame here. I, I kind of disagree. Uh, with Go the ahead. sentiment that there's there's nothing to blame. What's to blame is Western society's inability to deal with mental health problems and to deal with the problem of people who have uh, poor mental health having access to these weapons and, and the ease of availability of these weapons. These are all things. Now, I don't know about the uh, gun climate in New Zealand, I but I know about it here. Fairly strict gun laws, and I'm a fucking area. American. And you know, I'm sorry. I'm doing my best to put on my. I'm concerned about this, and this is sad because it is. I, I, you know, if I could un- <coughs> flip a switch and undo this, of course you would. Yeah, I would do it. But you know, I'm an American, and this is like weekly news to us here. And I've become so weary of talking about it because I really feel that that is now is that the answer to all of it? Is better mental health care and better screening when you're getting weapons going to stop all of this? No. But it is the answer, man. It's the right. closest thing we have to an answer. Well, here, here's the thing. I didn't so really. What, what do we point the finger you know, at and I, blame I, here? The kids. I was wa- parents you know, reading the manifesto. You know, I mean, obviously, anyone who's gonna go on a, a rampage like that is probably well, gonna leave a manifesto. He's fucked up in some way, but I didn't. All, I didn't all get except really the, the dude sense, in though, fucking uh, Vegas. Did, he didn't. He didn't really care to leave a manifesto for <laughs> well, some reason. I, I didn't. Um, I don't know. He didn't really strike me as being uh, an overtly mentally ill guy. He seemed more to me like the right wing equivalent of the Muslim uh, fundamentalists but, that but, take but, on these kind of rampages, the where it was very ideologically. I mean, driven. most <laughs> mentally ill people don't seem overtly mentally ill. Yeah, but but here's the thing too uh, that I think no one's really talking about. It's really an epidemic in a lot of uh, societies now. Is like social isolation. Like a lot of people. You know, it's kind of described as you have a thousand followers, but zero friends. And right. it's kind of like this thing now where people, you know, instead of having these like interpersonal contact with people in their day to day lives, now they now they go on the Internet and they go into these little uh, insular groups like right. to, a kind of a phenomenon that you kind of predicted, TJ. I mean, years ago, yeah. me and you talked about that. You're like, dude, social media is just, just going to come down to like your little sub fucking group. Where it's just everyone has the same opinion, everyone Everyone's just memes the, the same the shit. Box and, shit. and it's like, and, and now <laughs> well, we're kind of stuck. Here's in another. That. Here's another thing about this guy though that's crazy, is um, he was like a, a world traveler. Um, he visited all these different countries. You know, you before his social media shit was taken down, you could have watched him in all these, going around these countries, talking to people, exploring the world, and you know, doing. Stuff that you know most people. But then, but then you become so, about care, to, so. What you're saying is he had a carefully crafted social media, yeah, persona, right? Which is, which is super important to a lot of people. And he, but I mean, I'm, I'm just saying he wasn't necessarily isolated. You know, he he was out there in the world. But that's, but, but that's a veneer. Tra- like, if right. you look at studies about people that do this stuff, one, all of it's carefully uh, choreographed, and two, it, it's meant to, for people to b- perceive them as someone like oh, that. When look, you're talking about mental health, isolation doesn't necessarily mean. A person who's not surrounded by people all the time. Right. There, there are people in this world that are profoundly isolated, or at least have a personal sense of profound isolation that spend right. all day swimming in people. Isolated because they're in their. And that's own head. what I'm talking about. That's the that's the that's the trickiness of this topic. That's what makes this not easy. It's because, like I said, people don't. I I may I might be a person that wears some of his mental illness on his sleeve, but most people that suffer are not like me. Right. They're not open about it. It's a private uh, hell that they go through. And that sense of isolation is very real, no matter how many fucking social media likes they have or how many countries they're visiting. Yeah. And uh, I will say that there was a big social media element to this shooting that I haven't seen in other shootings. Uh, Just the fact of live streaming an event like this on Facebook. Um knowing that of course the video is going to be everywhere whether you know and of course all this all the news media and social media companies are trying to suppress the video but it's out there it's I mean, never look, going we away fucking, yeah Stry- the, dude, effects, dude, same with same for the manifesto swing. dude this shit i mean columbine really kicked all this off and fucking manson in the song was it lamb of god basically just calls this totally it's like if if you die and there's no one watching you know and that's just the same kind of thing it's like 
this guy want an audience for his, this shit. It's like it's like it's like people nowadays are aware of that. It's like I have I can be an influencer. I can have an audience, even if it's to do something terrible. And it's we've seen it time and time again. People have been beaten. People have been murdered. People have been fucking raped. All on social media. Right. It's like there's just like this. This, you know, this urge that's so strong in some people to have attention, even if it's for the worst and most despicable acts. So let's go ahead and get into the shooter and his motives a little bit. I absolutely agree, though, Scotty. Um, a 28-year-old white Australian man has been arrested and charged with murder in the attack. He is expected to appear uh, in court on Saturday morning. Officials said he had not appeared on any security watch lists. Um, Authorities have not released the shooter's name. His manifesto is reportedly filled with white supremacist rhetoric, such as uh, references to ensuring a future for white children and conspiracy theories about white genocide. According to the New York Times, the shooter says he's using guns in the massacre to stir discord in the U.S. over the Second Amendment. Uh, While gun deaths are extremely rare in New Zealand, there are plenty of guns. Uh, In 2017, the country of 4.6 million people had 1.2 million registered firearms. Uh, He also called himself a fascist, remarking, for once, the person that will be called a fascist is an actual fascist. Um, The shooter's post on Twitter showed weapons covered with the names of military generals and men who have carried out mass murders, including Dylan Roof and Anders Breivik. Uh, In 2011, Breivik, uh, also a white supremacist, shot and killed 77 young adults who were attending a workers' youth league camp in Norway. Since then, his actions and manifesto appear to have become a touchstone for other white supremacists committed to mass violence. This guy kind of I mean, emulated a- uh, Anders Breivik, too. He, yeah. even, he even claims in the manifesto to have been in contact with him, though Breivik's lawyer, uh, lawyer basically said it's pretty much very unlikely or impossible. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but this is sounding to me like what I think is going to be very soon in our society a template of the disaffected white male with no friends in real life, who lives their entire life on the internet, who finds one of these meme-based cultures and then finds some of the more extreme shit in that and works his way into this white supremacist mindset. I'm not saying that everybody that goes down that path ends up killing a bunch of people. I'm just starting to say... Uh, what what I, I'm starting to see a pattern build yeah. in the young men that do this. I mean, like <clears throat> ultimately, it's just the, it's just the cry to... to I mean, I think truly be listened to because I think I think in this day and age, I think people are so distracted that a lot of these people just feel like you said they might be around people, but being around people is not even is kind of almost an overrated now. Like, how many, who's not pulling out a phone now to look at a phone or look at some be somewhere else? And it's like your interpersonal react, interactions with a lot Most of people. Most interpersonal reaction is profoundly surface level. It's just something that we almost do. Hi, by, how are you? How you doing? I am fine. Oh yeah, me how too. About you? Well, the same we are fine. The wife. There's la, nothing la, la. in yeah, that. Now, now, now I'm on social media. Now I'm looking at pictures of my kids or whatever. Right, you know? and then the social media shit. I mean, I don't want to go on a fucking whole tangent about that, but it is a profound distorter of reality, to put it, it mildly is. and simply. Social media is, if anything, in my mind, as I've come to understand it, and I'm a fucking boomer or whatever, so I don't really, I wasn't born on <laughs> Hashtag it. Hashtag boomer means. Bo- right. You're not a baby boomer. Well, whatever. I, I'm just going to start that. owning that shit because I'm just so sick of it. You're whatever. A bo- I'm you're, a goddamn you're a boomer, boomer. in spirit. I don't, I, and, and really, I wasn't born on the whole social media thing. I came pretty late to it, and I still haven't really adopted it. I think I made my first post on Instagram last night. <laughs> in, incidentally. No joke. Oh, there you go. Um, so take this with a grain of palt, but I, I have found with my experiences in social media, it to be a profound distorter of what's real and what's important and what's, uh, uh, on people's minds. All of those things are warped in the lens of social media. But then, of course, the me- the the regular old fashioned media just holds well, a megaphone up but to social of course. media. But here's, here's the thing now. Even though it is a distorted image, the gravity that it has now is so immense that it's going to attract all these things to it. So oh, yeah. it, it can't be ignored because people feel like it's important. And if people feel like that, the media obviously is just embracing what so, the people uh, already care about. As we mentioned earlier, um, PewDiePie uh, was referenced in the video. And obvi- I mean, look, subscribe to PewDiePie meme. as a fucking meme. Yeah. All right. It's a meme. It's this a guy, meme. this guy, I mean, I don't know. He was know. aware of that. He's aware of PewDiePie. I don't know. I don't think he did this, like, attack in PewDiePie. For PewDiePie! Name or <laughs> some shit. And even if he did, it doesn't, like, look, you could say that about any, you could take any person and say the exact same thing. So here's what uh, Pewds had to say about it. Um, just heard news of the devastating reports from New Zealand Christchurch. I feel absolutely sickened having my name uttered by this person. My heart and thoughts go out to the victims, families, and everyone affected by this tragedy. About the best thing you could do on, yeah. on fucking Twitter. Yeah, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. 
And obviously, PewDiePie had no choice but to put out some kind of reaction. I mean, which, this. I mean, I don't know. That's a whole different discussion, but I hate that shit, too. Like, just because I'm out there in the media and some crazy fuck does something, I'm, I'm like, required 81, to come and answer for it. He has 81 million subscribers on YouTube. I mean, he's known internationally. Yeah. I mean, how, how is it fair? It's like, that'd be, that, that, that. I mean, you can say about anything. You can be like, for the rock. Do, 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 do. Like, now, now well, Dwayne well, Johnson must apologize. You can go to a used bookstore <laughs> and find an old, like, 1972 yearbook from a high school. You don't even know where it is. And flip through it and go, John William Stevenson, I do this for you. Ah! <laughs> You know, is that guy got to make a fucking social media post going, I'm fucking sickened that so, this uh, dude did this in my name? I don't know. It just and, seems uh, silly. Of course, Trump was also uh, mentioned in the manifesto. Um, Only once, though. Yeah. Uh, just a, a, a real quick Trump reference. Basically, the killer said, I don't agree with his policies, but I like the, his racial division or whatever. Yeah, his but, white nationalist. So, yeah, I like that. Uh, anyway, so Trump's reaction. Uh, my warmest sympathy and best wishes... Best wishes is a weird thing. Best in this wishes situation. sounds like what you <laughs> yeah. give somebody that's graduating high school. Best right. wishes on your massacre. Not, not a family that just lost like multiple members or whatever. <laughs> you know. Anyway, it goes out to the people of New Zealand after the horrible massacre in the mosques. Forty nine innocent people have uh, so senselessly died, with so many more seriously injured. The U.S. stands by New Zealand for anything we can do. God bless all. All right. See, if I was New Zealand. I'd call this social media bluff. <laughs> I'd be like, New Zealand needs $20 billion of, you know, strings-free cash infusion right now. Yeah. And then make him say no to me. And then, you know, start a campaign of, like, New Zealand You said was anything we to. needed. You lied Hashtag to us. Hashtag Trump the liar. <laughs> lying to a country in its hour of direst need. Anything you need, New Zealand. Anything. We need your entire military to be transferred to the sovereign control of New Zealand. Please. All right, that's a little too far. <laughs> Fucking knowing Trump, he might do it. He'd be like, you know what? I said it, and I stand by what I unsaid. Here you go. I said what here's I meant, the, and I meant what I said. A Trump the, is faithful 100%. Here's the keys to the fucking USS Enterprise. Go for it. I love it. Walk uh, nine. Yeah, um... You know, uh, I think maybe uh, I, I appreciate the um, the attitude of um, you know, or maybe not appreciate is the wrong word, but like I, I understand the attitude of just being so numb to these shootings at this point. But I think just the fact of the video being out there probably has made it hit me a little harder than the previous shootings. But uh, I'm sure we'll we'll soon be at a day you where there's better, mass TJ? shootings on video every other fucking week, and it's just going to be like whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, oh, dude, this five, definitely isn't going to happen without at least a copycat dude, or two. With 5G coming, it's going to get so fucking common to have just and see, live there, streams of everything. This is like Andrew Yang's position that we have no plan to deal with the coming apocalypse of, like, low-skilled jobs going away. Yeah. This is the same thing. Like, we have no plan to deal with the repercussions of... I don't even know what to blame this. I'm not trying to blame it on any one thing. The repercussions of a profoundly neglected generation of children <coughs> who <laughs> have been allowed to basically raise themselves in an environment filled with spurious information and bad faith actors and people that are looking to, you know, poison the minds of other people on the regular. Well, well look, it's clearly a cultural problem, but the problem is, with, is cultures are not confined to these nice little borders and lines on maps anymore. Culture is now, we now have a world culture, culture that's developing. And it's rapid, you can see, because this guy was lived in New Zealand, but he was well aware of everything that's going on here. Yeah, and he even, I mean, like... You it know, wasn't like any of this shit was lost on him. Like, all this information part is being of his, shared internationally now. Part of his plan was, you know, I'm going to help move the U.S. to uh, confiscate the guns, which I don't know what in historical precedent would ever I mean, lead him to believe that we're going to react to a kind of, shooting in that way. But I don't even know what kind of fantasy would lead anybody to believe that that's a feasible thing in this country. You know how many right. guns are in this There's country? There's so many. They're, they're like 15 guns for every human being in this country. How are you going to confiscate that? I mean, it's a, it's a huge number of so, guns. So, yeah, but he thinks, he, in his mind, the killer's mind, he's like, they're going to ban guns, and then it's going to cause a civil war. Right. He's and almost going to get into the Charlie. The U.S. will be an ethno state. Yeah, he's, he's almost 
almost get to a Charlie Manson thing. The black and whites are going to fight in the streets kind of so thing. So did he take the uh, coward's exit at the end of this? Or no, what? he got arrested. He, he got arrested. arrested. Oh, so he's he was alive. Arrested. He's, a, he's a living. So that's interesting. Still alive. You uh, were, he wanted to be. Like, yeah, you actually stepped out earlier at, when we were talking about that. Uh, he he's he was taken alive. He's in jail. He he's going to court. Andrews uh, Breivik, who, was, who also was captured alive. Well, now in prison I got to say time. that, like, that might be a bright spot in all this. Not that his life is worth any more or less than anybody else's, but just to have him available for psychologists and sociologists to study. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, if he chooses to make, you know, if he's one of those guys that seeks interviews and stuff, he might be an actually useful you know, informational source for coming up with some kind of a solution for this, or at least a Band-Aid for yeah, it, uh, a well, suture for take, it, something. Take, you know, I, uh, hopefully New Zealand is going to be a little smarter than we would be about this, and they're actually going to try to figure out what went wrong psychologically I really hope with so, this man. person. See, here's what I fear is going to happen. Yeah. I fear that we're going to get this hyper-focus on 4chan and all the weird internet shit that he did. Which is obviously a part of this. He wrote it all over his guns and he memed it all over his manifesto. But I feel like hyper focusing on that is doing what he wanted us to do. He didn't sprinkle that shit in there without wanting it to touch the lips of every fucking person. I mean, that he put Chatelet well, in that's his manifesto a simpl- or whatever the fuck. Well, that's a simplistic way to look at it too, because so many people do that with just innocent things. So I mean, that, that he's, that, he's that's just really a, a cultural product. I mean, that happens. So right. many people do that. So I think just simply say, oh, it's 4chan or this. Like I don't think that's really the an broader answer. the broader picture here, and what I hope comes out of this is a focus on mental health and parenting, because this kid was parented at some point. I guess, in or maybe quotes. not. <laughs> he was maybe parented not, you know? and we those people know. you know what dude it is it, it's it's nigh past time that we start putting a little spoonful of accountability in the laps of parents right you're right because you know what dude uh, another thing is uh, sorry <laughs> go I, ahead you know, no, please, it, I, was kind, I was actually trying to add to your point yeah. a little bit because i i do know uh, about him that um one of the things that spurned his world travels was uh distress over the death of his father um and uh, I don't know. I mean, he describes his relationship with his parents as being good, but we just don't know what happened in that that household. Well, you know, it, let's draw an inference and once again take this from with a grain of salt. This guy has been described so far as like an, a denizen of the internet who was very focused on his online life, right? At least towards the end, when he, especially towards you yeah. know after he couldn't travel the world anymore, he was very much an online personality or figure or whatever that's he put a lot of importance onto that he was a participant i would say at least we don't have a large social media influence well i mean look he, well he, think about this though when, i mean look it, it, here's another aspect of this we could talk about honestly well i want to before you before you move on to that i want to fucking point out go ahead i mean our dad died and it was a fundamental dramatic shift in our lives right so it was like I mean, so he could have had a life where it's like his dad was kind of like this figure in his life. That's what you're going to do with your life. And, you know, he's going along with that. And then suddenly he's dead. And it's like, what the fuck do I do with my life? Well, what I was going to say, too, is if we assume that about his parents, that they were what what can we assume that a person that's like that, an Internet dude that's online all the time and obsessed with social media? What what would he want from a parent? What would he consider a good parent? Somebody that stayed the fuck out of his way, probably, and probably. let him sit in his room and do whatever he wanted, right? Which Maybe. probably, probably so, didn't need. This dude is not a good fucking witness for what a good parent is. Yeah. And I mean, him saying that his parents were good could probably lead us to infer that the obvious yeah. is, or the opposite is actually true. Right. Well, his parents I mean, were probably very far, permissive. At least just let him do it, what he wanted. It, we, we know that he, they probably weren't putting cigarettes out on his arm. No, no. Well, that's something uh, I want to say about these kids, though. These shut in kids. That end up like a lot of them that end up doing this type of shit. They've got fucking parents that are enabling this shit. Like, and that environment has something to do with what they've done. Right. Well, let's think about this too, though. Um, there's a skip the line mentality here, because you know this guy, for all of his social media concern and savvy, uh, really didn't have any sort of big account or anything. Uh, but 
you know, you can skip all that work of building that up by just being like, I'll just kill a bunch of people and then everyone will read my manifesto. Right. Then everyone will care what I have to say. And to, to ensure say. it, I'm going to just lace it with every meme I can find on the internet so that every fucking human being on the planet hears about the dude that killed a bunch of people for Keck or for this or for that, whatever meme. I'm not... I, I don't and think he mentioned at, Keck, at, but, at this yeah, point, but you know, I'm just throwing memes. I, I, I is he wrong, what though? Mean. Is he wrong? Ultimately, he's right, isn't he? No, he's... Uh, look, the guy... Say what you want. He's right. He's obviously, though. a piece of shit. But uh, he gets exactly he, what he wants. Is he playing? Did did his manifesto and the way he did this play social media like a fiddle? Absolutely. Did it play traditional media like a fiddle? Absolutely. Um, you know, he everything that he wanted his manifesto and his act of killing a bunch of people to do it pretty much is done. Uh, now it's not going to probably lead to an ethno state, but as far as the immediate results that he was looking for, he's got them. And uh, I guess another thing I'd like to say about the social media aspect too: if you had a genuine take on this, or you added something other than thoughts and prayers to it, then you can exempt yourself from this. But everybody else, you've made it more attractive for people to do shit like this with your constant spam retweeting of it, and your constant memeing about it, and your little wide eyes, shocked smiley over the story on your fucking shit. When you amplify a message of a sick person like this, other sick people take note. And we live in a, a society now where there was a big debate about this with just the normal media, if you remember when we were kids. Right. When a big one of these shootings, how much of this should we cover? Because the normal media did the same fucking thing. They wanted to cover it rapidly. 24-7 Columbine. And then people started asking the question, like, should we be fucking given all of this press and showing all these <coughs> pictures of these kids when their stated goal, yeah. one of them, was to be seen and heard by as many people as possible? It's like, um, you know, uh, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold uh, were on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, it was something that uh, Marilyn Manson, who, of course, was the scapegoat of the, at the time, um, kind of drew attention to. He's like, look, I don't think if you really want to look for someone to blame for this, let's also look at the fact that. You know, don't be surprised when yeah. every kid who gets picked on has two new fucking but heroes. Let's fucking because you plastered them in Time Magazine, and you're right. like they're that you've mythologized. But them. let's not. I mean, look, the media is always the first fucking and and like, look, they have their share of it too. But if the American people and if the fucking public at large didn't want to hear about this shit and didn't want to fucking see the spectacle, it's like when you see a fucking car crash, you just can't help but look. And all right. these people. They always want to exempt themselves. I'm not a part of the problem. People have always... The, the, the mob is the fucking who they're doing this for. That's They, they want those eyeballs, and they want their dollars, and well, they want it, it now. And Twitter, I mean, Twitter amplifies this shit in a way that the normal media could never do. That's why the normal media years. sucks its dick so hard, because it wishes it was that. CNN wishes people were flocking to it to give their opinions, because nobody wants to go to their unusable website. They don't even have a forum anymore, because it would probably be spammed to shit. They want to be social media. <clears throat> and that's just it. Well, uh, that's our thoughts. Um, we could give about 30 minutes of them, so... Jesus. Uh, yeah, it was a little longer than we probably initially meant to do, and I feel like there's so much more we could talk about about it, but we got a lot more to do today, so... Uh, for those of you wondering where we're, our heads are at on it, uh, this is it, and I also did a video uh, on my own talking about it a little check, earlier today. Check TJ's video so out. So that's on my channel. She Shay. She Shay's video. She Oh, TJ, your video so good. Oh, I love your video, oh, TJ. Oh, so good. Oh, video. TJ, your video so good. Oh. Oh. And, uh, of course, don't forget to uh, RSVP if you're going to show up in uh, Glencoe, Alabama to the Big Chief. Yeah, if you don't RSVP, we're kicking your ass on site. Beating the shit out of you right when we see you. <laughs>